know that's going to become a theme, but um, Catherine's support over the years meant a huge amount to me, personally. This poem was um, conceived as an analogy for one person, and ended up being an analogy for several people, really, including its author, who isn't quite dead yet, but, um, but felt as though he's beginning to join in with his subject um, halfway through. And at one point, I, um, I, was, I had to go to hospital because I, I, had some, uh, I was diagnosed with an illness. And um, they were scanning my uh, hands. And uh, one of the, some of the imagery from the, uh, in the poem comes from that. And it's an extraordinary thing. If you've had, ever had it done, there's modern scans. You can actually look at the inside of yourself. And it's kind of wonderful. You no longer have to cut yourself open to do so. <laughs> Um, and uh, as I say, the imagery, a lot of the imagery comes from that, and I think it's it, uh, hopefully in some way reflects the, uh, the wonders of modern medicine as well as other things. But as I say, it's really about um, loss. And the person it was originally conceived for, as an analogy, would never have liked to have been named in, or identified in any way. So I decided in the end just to call it In Memoriam, um, which is a bit a bit of hubris, really, um, as you all know, um, Tennyson's great poem. But I previously titled a poem Four Quartets and seemed to get away with it. <laughs> so look out for my next poem. It's called In Praise of Limestone. <laughs> this is in several parts. I'll just read until my time runs out because I'm not quite sure what I can cover um, in the time. But I, it, it's in several parts. I just name the title as I go through. And the first one is called Abu de Souffle, um, Breath, Breathless. It's the title of a Godard movie. Not the Richard Gere movie, the, the, the genre Godard movie. Someone might call it ether, but for you, the light at the end of the tunnel is never quite air. And breath is a shape that sails out over the rooftops into the lights off the key and the tethered yawls. Awake all night, as the lovers are awake in that Goddard film where everyone runs all the time, I think of you as fog or phosphorescence vanishing into the weft of the hospital linen, BP and oxygen falling like notes on a scale, less song than resonance, less cry than chime. A mapped line in a field of iron filings, or how a lost room settles in the bone, pale as the fire in those cradles of horsehair and tallow we used to burn out at the salt pans on wet afternoons, currying in like ghosts to the gold of the flame and finding a home there, delicate, incomplete, and perfect, like the gray scale in this film that sifts out your future and seals it in cirrus, then stone. Pain management. You never much cared for the angels walking their finery home in a borrowed light, ventriloquist, formal, drenched in the distance of heaven. But somewhere in the dark beyond the rain, Crossing a meadow or bent to a flickering kill, the animal that matched you note for note would catch a scent and turn or lift its head to listen while this drizzle in the bone pursued its course. All night on the surgery ward, you were still playing catch on that strip of lamplight and grass between home and the rest of the world, the first rain turning to sleet on the pavements and hedges the dog in your neighbor's garden barking at no one. Or else you were leaning in to the flicker and twitch of a dream you could never enter, hoping to catch the ghost of something feral in a slick of dew, or a ribbon of blood on a moonlit track, like the perfume of transit, that no man's land you find on the drive to an airport, say, or a Sunday excursion, a frontier of trees, or a pond at the edge of a meadow where something you must have disturbed has hurried aside and left you a liverish stain in the yellowing grass, all feathers and teeth and a remnant of hallelujah. The third part's called 
When the mind is like a hall in which thought is like a voice speaking, the voice is always that of someone else, which is a quote from Wallace Stevens. In the clinic it came again of being a thing, like stealing away to that mare's nest of matchwood and straw in the scullery, seven years old and determined that nothing should perish. Illumined bone immersed in the noir of x-ray, salvage and skein deciphered in the scan until it seems your body is a gloss on something else. The secret creature cradled in the skin, feeding on pain and sweetness, eldritch, angelic, a straggle of beak and feathers, an arm's length of gristle, and then you were finding it everywhere, wood pigeons, lavender, rainwater pooled in a stump of sycamore, God in the details, perhaps, and perhaps the geometry of one thing, then another. Watching for spring, and the first warmth blown through the gorse on the road to the graveyard, blisters of yellowing bud and skin, and that knot in the bone uncurling. How the flesh betrays itself is something to be observed and then forgotten. Say these blossoms in the rain are tokens for the heart, if not the hand, countering loss with surrender, decay with gain, bloodroot and campion, clutches of thrift and narcissus. This evidence you found, then found again, rephrasing the heart in a ravel of swans down and webbing. A paradise of birds in a wash of static, finch in the bones of the hand of the smaller falcons, Curlew and Harrier, Godwit and Sacred Ibis, or here what remains of Iguana or Axolotl, sung from the cloud of a body that never felt as solid as it looked, interiors of maiden hair and fog where every night the hunter seeks its prey, the gun to ground of something in the heart you cannot name after the pig squeal and judder of untold love. In the stories they used to tell on mornings like this, a boy and his sister would walk out into the dark and never return. Or someone would find a knife in a wave of ash and cut the line that bound him to this world, a locked breath bobbing away in the April wind. How suddenly it seems the house falls still. Even the owls have stopped in the nether field and the cars on the coast road blur into wind and distance. Yet all night the stories return in altered form. A marriage falling open like a book and slow colored insects spilling across the floor or from the walls an interrupted sound like someone thinking in an empty hall from thought to song, from song to widowhood, a voice that is quiet and clear till you open the door. The last part's called Annunciation. In the stories they used to tell for the soon-to-be-dead, a woman comes in from the garden, shaking the snow from her coat in a lighted hall, the lamp on the kitchen table a stored magnificat, the vase of poppy heads and winter sweets suspended like a mist annunciation, and caught in the perfect lull between lost and found, her body becomes a footnote to itself light as a feather, blood warm, utterly whole, and dry as the voice her grandmother kept in reserve for love songs and premonitions. And that's how it must have been when the daylight thickened and stalled on your hands and you put down the book you were reading to listen. No angel, of course, but you turned to the window, lightened with expectation, and something was there after all the smell of the meadows, the last sun pooled in the beach hedge, and further away, the dog fox from down in the valley come up to hunt for mice in the first day of harvest, everything dusted with sweetness and flame from your bed to the edge of the town and beyond. On the coast road, a grey wind in from the sea to gather you home. No word, no enunciation only the cool of it finding your lips and fingers and burrowing in for the sweetness 
that darkens the bone. Thank you.